Welcome to Transport Vlog. My name is Paul and I'm currently in Westmead and behind me is the future terminus for the Parramatta Light Rail. So this is going to be an update on all the work that's happening on the Parramatta Light Rail as of February 2022. Parramatta Light Rail will run from Westmead to Carlingford and is about 12 kilometres in length. It's due to open in 2023. In this video I'm going to cover the section between Westmead Station and Tramway Avenue. I'm going to start with the Westmead Station to the Children's Hospital section. This section is wire free and is shared with other road traffic so I've coloured this in purple on the map. This is how the Westmead Terminus is looking at the moment. Railway Parade and Westmead Station are behind me. You can see the two tracks quite clearly here there is currently earthwork happening on both sides of the tracks, so I believe this is where the platforms will be. There is also work taking place in the middle between the two tracks. I am not sure what is going on here, so if you have any ideas, please share these in the comments below. Just outside this stop is your typical double crossover junction. This has really progressed since my last update back in October 2021. This is how it looked then. I certainly couldn't walk on it like I can now. After the Westmead stop, the line joins Hawkesbury Road. As you can see, this is all finished. The road appearing on the left where these cars are is Darcy Avenue. So some of the things that I'm looking out for as I walk around today are potential platforms. There weren't any platforms between Westmead and Tramway Avenue when I was here back in October. Overhead wires on the overhead wire section. Completion of track, because there was a few areas that didn't have any track last time I was here and anything else such as tram only traffic light signs. This is looking south from further up Hawkesbury Road. It all looks finished. And these tram tracks will be shared with other vehicles, including local bus services such as this one. Now it's the Westmead Hospital stop and here is the southbound platform. Notice the slope at the end. This is to provide step free access. This platform starts just north of the junction with Caroline Street. This stop will be super convenient for this apartment building, which is literally right next to it. Here is a side view of the southbound platform. The tracks are behind the fencing. This looks like the support for a wall, perhaps for the canopy roof. This is how the northbound platform is looking right now. Notice that it doesn't have a ramp as yet. This is in the wrong place to be a platform, so I think it will be used for planting some trees or shrubs. The track north of the Westmead Hospital stop looks finished as well. So I'm now just north of the Westmead Hospital stop. This line over here, this is the northbound line. As you can see there's cars and buses using this. And then I'm on a bit of the southbound line, um, which is a pedestrian um, access way at the moment. It's a little bit of a maze around here, but there's plenty of signs and people to help me find my way. So I was literally walking on one of the southbound tracks. The line now takes a sharp right as Hawkesbury Road becomes Hainsworth Road. Notice how far apart the tracks are here. And here is how it looked three months earlier. It's been quite a transformation since then. So I'm now at the Children's Hospital at Westmead stop. I'm actually walking on the, what is now the westbound line, so the line going towards Westmead. And on my left, so here, is the island platform for this stop. So the line towards Parramatta is here, the island platform is here, and the line towards Westmead starts just where the fencing is. This is the line to Westmead that I was walking on. So now looking in the other direction, so back towards Westmead, you can see that the platform is still very much a work in progress at the moment. Hainsworth Road runs alongside the tram lines here, which means that the trams will be segregated from other vehicles, so it's time to update my map. I've used light blue to represent tram-only wire-free sections. As the tram only section now starts just before the children's hospital stop, this means that this section should be light blue. Shortly after the children's hospital at Westmead stop, the line veers to the left to run alongside Bridge Road. This section has been finished for a while now. However, closer to the Parramatta River Bridge is much less finished. This is alongside Bridge Road. The tracks are here and this area to the right will be for an active transport path for walkers, runners and cyclists. 
there are small sections like this that are waiting for the final concrete pour. It looks like something is going to be built on this concrete slab, which is immediately before the Parramatta River. I don't know what this will be, but if you know, do share this in the comments below. Now coming into view is the new two-span bridge over the Parramatta River. Besides carrying the tram lines, it will also carry the active transport path, which will be on the left of this fencing. As you can see, there is still quite a lot of work to do here. Now on the other side of the Parramatta River, and it looks like the tracks might be laid on the bridge, but it's difficult to tell. The active transport path is now on the right. Looking back towards the new bridge, and you can see that there is a gap in the concrete between each running line. This gap will be filled in with soil and grass, and it will be known as a green track section. Keep watching to see what a completed green track section actually looks like. I wasn't expecting the green track section to start almost immediately after the new bridge, so another map amendment is required. So let's add a bit more green to the map. This was how it looked back in October, before the tracks were laid. Now looking west into the Cumberland Hospital grounds, and all the green track section rails and concrete supports are now in place. This has happened within the last three months. This is back in October before the tracks were laid and all that's here is a big puddle. Here are some more views of the green track section within the Cumberland Hospital grounds. This is looking west towards the bridge. And this is looking east towards Eastern Circuit. A pedestrian crossing within the hospital grounds is provided just here. All the footage for this video was taken on Sunday the 20th of February and as you can see quite a lot of work was happening in this area even though it was a Sunday. This is taken from Eastern Circuit looking west. You can see the pedestrian crossing that I mentioned earlier and the line gently turning left towards the Parramatta River Bridge. Now looking east from the same location. This is still a green track section. The lines bend slightly to the left. Notice the purple cables that will soon be hidden by soil and grass. And we have poles for the overhead wires. Where these start is where the Cumberland Hospital stop will be. This also marks the end of the green track section. Time for another map update. I thought the green track section only ran to Eastern Circuit, but it actually continues to the Cumberland Hospital stop. A new path is being built to connect this stop with Eastern Circuit and the main hospital buildings which are behind me. Now at the Cumberland Hospital stop, and you can see the edges of the two side platforms here. Notice the overhead wire poles, which seem to be quite large. The platforms end just before New Street, which is on the right. This is taken from New Street. You can see the tracks here and the edges of the platforms on either side. At the Cumberland Hospital stop, trams will switch from battery power to power from overhead wires. At the same time, power from the overhead wires will recharge the trams' batteries for the next wire-free section within the Parramatta CBD. So in this next section, from the Cumberland Hospital stop to the Prince Alfred Street stop, I'll reveal how the overhead wires are progressing. Also, like the first section from Westmead, this section is shared with other traffic, so red on the map indicates shared sections that have overhead wires. This is the single crossover junction, which is just east of the Cumberland Hospital stop. This could be used to reverse a tram in either direction. The lines then cross O'Connell Street, which is a fairly busy road as you can see, so I'm sure we'll see some traffic lights here, hopefully ones that will detect a tram coming and give it priority over this junction. So I'm now close to the point where the line takes a sharp right towards the factory street stop. It's great to have seen platforms and also overhead wire mass, so I can take those both off my list. Time for a little walk along what will be the westbound line to Westmead. You can see that all the poles for the overhead wires are in position here. I am currently walking on Factory Street and the line will shortly make a sharp right to join Church Street. There is a new footpath being created on the right. The distance between the tracks is also quite wide here. I think this must be to provide sufficient clearance as the trams go around these corners into Church Street, which is coming into view now. 
notice the tarmac that seems to have gone into the rails here. Now at the factory street stop, which will have two side platforms, as you can see here. This is the platform for trams going towards Westmead. Now looking south along Church Street with the factory street stop behind me, St Patrick's Cemetery is on the left. Now looking north with the factory street stop in the distance, you can see these newly created planters with shrubs already in them. I think the path on the right might become a cycleway or a shared path. There are regular drainage channels in the track bed, such as this one here. So now in between the factory street and Fennel street stops and the overhead wire masts here are a lot more developed with the horizontal sections that will hold the overhead wires. And you might remember those uprooted traffic signals from our last video, well they're now in place. Well they are in place but are still not connected. The road on the left is Pennant Hills Road, which then becomes Albert Street after this junction. This is a busy road, hence the need for the new traffic signals. Now for some nerdy electrification stuff. The vertical masts are also known as poles or stanchions. The horizontal poles that hold the overhead wires are known as cantilevers, although this one isn't very horizontal as yet. These tension cables will be adjusted to make it horizontal. The poles, cantilevers, tension cables and the overhead wires themselves are often known as overhead catenary. Now looking south, and it seems like this section is segregated, with other vehicles using the roads to the left and right of the tram tracks. This is the road that runs to the west of the tram lines. These planters with shrubs in them create a small ramp, which should be enough to remind other road users that the tram lines are not for them. From here, you can see these long urban planters on either side and how they provide separation from the road. They also provide space for overhead wire poles as well. So as that last section is trams only with vehicles running on either side, it's time to update my map again. Pink is the colour for tram only sections with overhead wires. So I'm now at the Fennel Street stop. I'm actually walking on the southbound line, so towards Parramatta. This stop has two side platforms. So we've got the southbound platform, which is over here, and then the northbound line, you might be able to see that, and then the platform on the other side of that. Here is the ramp to the northbound platform. And now you can see the actual platform coming into view. Here is another view of how the northbound platform looks right now. Here is the northbound platform from the south side. This is a view of the southbound platform. You're going to see a whole lot more of these new traffic lights waiting to be installed in this video. These ones are at the junction with Gross Street. These new traffic signals will have the T indicators for trams. This is now close to the Victoria Road junction, which is behind me. It looks like there might be some space for road vehicles to run alongside the tram lines, especially on this side. However, I won't update my map just yet. Here are some more new traffic signals waiting to be installed at the busy junction with Victoria Road. This is the Prince Alfred Square stop. You can see the partially built northbound platform here. And here is a view of the southbound platform. At this stop, the overhead wires will end and another wire-free section will begin. So I'm now going to cover the central section through Parramatta CBD, which is all wire-free, indicated in purple, with some wire-free tram and pedestrian-only sections, which are indicated in orange. I'm not completely sure what is going on here, just south of the Prince Alfred Square stop. It looks like the tracks have already been laid below these wooden strips. If you know what is happening here, please do share this in the comments below. This is looking from Market Street. Road vehicles will only be able to turn left, as a section to the right will become trams and pedestrians only. I'm now on the Lennox Bridge, which takes Church Street and the light rail over the Parramatta River. This is looking towards the north. Now viewing the tracks on the Lennox Bridge and you can see these additional black strips on the inside of each track. But don't get too excited, these are purely for drainage. Now at the Eat Street stop, and the green verges on either side of the tracks will be the future platforms. And here is the sign that confirms this. All the track on Church Street, from Lennox Bridge to where the lines bend left to join Macquarie Street, is all finished and looks like this. This has allowed the shops and restaurants in this area to get back to normal. 
This is where the line bends left to join Macquarie Street. Notice the big tram only signs on this road. Time to update my map again. So I thought that this bit was shared with traffic coming from Macquarie Street to Horwood Place, but actually it's trams and pedestrians only. Vehicles coming from Macquarie Street will cross the tram tracks and then travel on this part of the road where the white arrow is. Here is another view of this curve from the opposite direction with Church Street over to the right. Now on Macquarie Street at the junction with Horwood Place and a small section of the tram tracks have been covered up with tarmac to allow traffic to turn into Horwood Place. The double crossover junction just west of the Parramatta Square stop looks pretty much finished. This is the first double crossover since the Westmead terminus. Just three months ago it looked very different. Now at the Parramatta Square stop this is looking east and you can see that the platforms are progressing nicely. Here is the view from the other end of this stop. Back in October 2021 you couldn't even see the track let alone the platforms so this stop has come a long way in the last three months. Now looking east towards the junction with Smith Street. So from the junction with Smith Street let's take a look at what is going on between here and Harris Street. Many more new traffic signals are waiting to be installed at the Smith Street Junction. At the moment traffic and pedestrian movements are being controlled manually using real people. Now on Macquarie Street between Smith Street and Charles Street notice the planters on the right which provide some segregation with the pedestrian footpath. At the Charles Street Junction I was surprised to see tram only signs on Macquarie Street. It does look like there might be space for one lane of traffic on the right. Time to update my map again. For now I'm going to assume that the segregated tram only section is between Barrack Lane and Charles Street. I've gone back to the light blue colour because this is a tram only section rather than tram and pedestrians only which is what the orange colour represents. Now looking east towards the Harris Street stop. Here are the two side platforms at the Harris Street stop. As you can see the tracks have been temporarily covered up here. This is looking back to the west from the end of this stop. The lines bend to the left as they cross Harris Street and then another green section begins. The soil is already in place and small trees have been planted in the newly created verge on the left. This is looking back towards the Harris Street stop which is on the right. Here is this next green track section on the map. This green track section runs along the edge of Robin Thomas Reserve which is where I am currently standing. Even on a Sunday there was some work taking place here. The line is now bending to the right to run alongside George Street. Here is another view of this curve which is looking back towards Harris Street. So here it is, a green track section that is complete with real grass. It starts on the curve just before the line runs alongside George Street. On the left is a verge with some small shrubs that segregates this from George Street itself. On the right is a small verge followed by a footpath. This is now looking west with the Parramatta CBD in the background and George Street on the right. Notice this pre-assembled metal grid unit for drainage which is about to be installed. It's wonderful to see the green sections now coming to life and as far as I can tell it's real grass which is going to need to be cut which poses the question who's going to cut it and when are they going to do it? It almost certainly will need to be done in the middle of the night. So in the early hours after the trams stopped running a team of people with lawn mowers will come in and give the grass a short back and sides. This green track section finishes at the junction of Nola Parade and Purchase Street. This is looking west with these two streets behind me. Just like on the Cumberland Hospital green track section there are some purple cables. This is probably the only time you will see these cables. If you know what their purpose might be do share this in the comments below. Now running towards Alfred Street and boy these cars are going fast. Anyway you can see how this section will be segregated from other vehicles and on the right it looks like a new road is being built for vehicles travelling west. So as you have just seen this part of George Street between Purchase Street and Alfred Street has a tram only section in the middle so it's now coloured light blue on the map. Now at the Alfred Street junction the line now goes around to the left to run alongside Alfred Street. Here is another view of the tracks as they leave George Street to run adjacent to Alfred Street and if you look closely 
you can see the start of another green track section. Here is a closer look at the start of the third green track section, along with a new lamp post that is lying across the tracks waiting to be installed. By way of comparison, this is how it looked in October 2021. Soil is currently being laid between the tracks in preparation for the grass. The tracks are now bending to the right to run alongside Tramway Avenue. Just like all the other stops except for the Children's Hospital at Westmead, this stop has two side platforms. You can see the platforms starting to take shape here. At this stop, trams were switched back to using overhead wires for power. However, there are no signs of any overhead wire poles as yet. And this is probably because there is quite a lot of other work to do first, such as completing the tracks. Here are the platforms at the east end of this stop. The tracks currently end just after this stop. According to the Parramatta Light Rail website, 97% of all track has now been laid. And I believe this is the only section that does not yet have tracks in place. Earthworks are continuing from here to the new bridge over James Roos Drive. As you can see, the lines will ascend quite steeply here to reach the bridge. The earthworks has included building this new embankment. Although this is not the best footage, you can see that the two tram tracks have now been laid on this bridge. To the right of the black fence is where the active transport path will go. Here is a view of where this path will be on the bridge. The active transport path will follow the light rail from Tramway Avenue all the way to Carlingford. So I'm going to finish the video here and do a part two. Part two will cover the other side of the James Roos Drive Bridge, Camellia, the maintenance facility, and then the other stops up to Carlingford. So if you enjoyed this video, do give it a like, give it a thumbs up, and do leave a comment or question below. I'll do my best to answer any questions you have. Also, subscribe to this channel if you haven't already, and do click the notification bell. That way you'll always be notified whenever I release future videos. Also, consider supporting me on Patreon. There's a link in the description below. So I'd like to thank you for taking the time to watch this video, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye for now.